Welcome, this is the kickoff lecture for Intro to Geology. We're going to call it Physical Geology. And this lecture is for my class, which is Geo 401 at University of Texas at Austin in the fall of 2024. That's what this class is designed for, but it may be being used by someone else around the world, and I'm excited to have you here. My name is Kenny Beefus. And in this class of physical geology, or intro, we're gonna study a variety of different themes over the course of this semester, over the course of these uh, YouTube videos that you're gonna find. Uh, it's gonna be topics like climate change, and so we're gonna do climate, we're gonna look at plate tectonics, we're gonna look at mineral resources and the rock cycle, we're gonna look at earthquakes, volcanoes, these are all the things that are gonna be coming over the course of um, this video series that I'll be sharing, of course, with my students who weren't able to come to class for one reason or another, although if you know, I value good attendance. So what are some other things I said? I said minerals, uh, deep time, that's a good topic that we're gonna get into, geologic time. We got volcanoes and earthquakes. Okay, so these are some of the topics we're gonna be covering over the course of the semester. The textbook, this is one of the number one questions I get, what textbook? Well, the textbook that we're gonna use is called, um, it's an online text, and it's a good textbook. It's, uh, let's see, the URL for this, we're gonna, if you, you wanna find this yourself, you can type opengeology.org um, backslash textbook. That URL will take you to this. Or you can, of course, just type into your favorite search engines like Google, uh, free geology textbook, and this is what you're gonna come to. The introduction to geology, um, Oh, you can oversee it basically here's our series of chapters in this and like we'll skip around from 15 to 12 to 2 to 3 and that's what we'll be using um, to support this class so for today's lectures we just start day one I want to teach you the four principles of geology to see more like a geologist and so the four principles we went over today in class some of these are called laws. I'm not sure if they're laws or if they're actually principles, but we're gonna just call them how like textbooks call them. And the first is the law of superposition. Hopefully my penmanship gets better over the course of this semester. It's a little hard to write on this iPad, but you'll see I have other videos for other classes and, and, and the penmanship does get a little bit better. All right, so the law of superposition, the idea is that rocks stack sequentially. They go from younger to older as you go down. So let, let's try to like say this and then draw this. We'll just say this as younger rocks cover older rocks. This is one of the gen general geologic principles that help you understand the world. So if we have a series of rocks, here they are. There's rock unit one, two, and three. And one of these rocks is one million years old. One of these layers is 10 million years old. And the other is a hundred. Oh, I did a thousand million years. We'll do that. A thousand million years, that equals one billion years. These are symbols of geology. MY stands for million years. GA, giga annum, so a thousand. So if you were to say, which one of these rocks is one billion years old? Well, according to the law of superposition, it would be the oldest. And so this is the one that is 1,000 million years old. Which one is 10 million years old? This is the one. And which is the youngest? What's the one shallowest in the stack, one million years old. All right, that's the law of superposition. Number two is gonna be the law of original horizontality. So number two, it takes longer to write these out than it does to explain them. Law of original, original horizontality. Oh, that penmanship, come on. And the idea of original horizontality is that rocks layers, rock layers are deposited horizontal. So rocks are deposited horizontally like so. And if you see rocks out in the field or in pictures that are folded or broken or in any way not horizontal, that means they've been modified. So according to this law, this is original and this is any change. 
And so if we see any change to that original horizontality, we would say that they've been acted on by a geologic pull, um, process. Good. Number three, our third principle is the law of cross-cutting relationships. Law of cross-cutting relationships. And this law basically applies to faults in the magmas. And the idea would be, if these are our rocks, anything that cuts across them, let's say, can I make my ink? Yeah, I can make it. Let's say, boom, we've got something that cuts across these black layers. That black layer is older, all right? This is older, and this red is younger. And the reason we know that is because it cuts across it. The older rocks had to be there in order for the young ones to cut across it. We'll practice this in various lab exercises. So if we were to write something about this, we would just say, I would say faults and magmas, faults and magmas cut older rocks. And then the fourth principle, the last thing we want to talk about today, is called uniformitarianism. It's the last way to see, general way to see the world like a geologist. And these guiding principles truly are something that we are trained in. Uniformitarianism. It's oftentimes stated with present is key to the past. And what present key to the past means Present is key to the present, no. Present is key to the past. And it means that the processes that are operating today, modern processes, give us insight into ancient processes. All right, and if you wanted to write something like that down, you'd say modern processes give insight into ancient processes. And the way to think about that may be like, let's say we have a rock, and this rock has these amazing ripple marks on the surface. But this rock is from an ancient time period. Well, we could infer that the same processes that made ripples today, like seashores, rivers, or wind, uh, let's say, let's see, river, wind, waves, that make ripples today made ripples in the ancient past. Or we could have a rock unit that we found and it's really poorly sorted with cobbles and boulders and sand all mixed together we would say that it is a conglomerate and that it is poorly sorted well the processes today that make a poorly sorted conglomerate rock are flood deposits or avalanches and so we could then look back into time and infer some ancient flood deposit or avalanche produced that conglomerate that's the end of today's lecture. I wanted to just leave you with a final quote that summarizes these things very well. It's from a famous geologist named Playfair, and he said, the mind seemed to grow giddy by looking so far into the abyss of time. And while we listened with earnestness and admiration to the philosopher who is now unfolding to us the order and series of these wonderful events, we became sensible how much farther reason may sometimes go and imagination can venture to follow. I'm excited to be teaching you geology over the course of this semester in these videos. Take care.